I have before you a picture of a painting that was done by Frank English, who lived between 1854 and 1922. This picture is entitled Storm Driven and was painted in 1884. We can see high waves uh, which are creating an uneven horizon line and the, shape, the ship is at an angle as it's being tossed around by the waves. We can see that there are red violet, blue gray, white gray, and white um, colors in the clouds and those are all grayed. Um, also, um, the same in the waves, uh, orange, blue, yellow waves, and black, uh, white as well, but they're all grayed as well. And the ship is a yellow ochre, burnt umber with some whites. This isn't going to be easy. It looks like a challenge, but I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Let's get started. I have a canvas that has been pre-primed with two coats of gesso and um, I have put an underpainting of a yellow orange. And here I'm observing the painting and looking at the colors and I'm just laying down color. I'm not looking at doing a lot of blending at this point. It's just laying down splotches of color. I'm using a 12 filbert. So not only am I observing the color, but I'm observing the value, um, the lightness or darkness of a color. I have sped up the video, so I don't really paint this fast, um, and I am doing a voiceover so that they don't take so long. The videos. Uh, can go a little faster. So we've laid down our mid-range colors and the darks, and now we're coming in and laying the lighter values in. So we're just making a good guess on placement of those lights and dark values and mid-range values. And we can always adjust those as we're painting. It really helps me to find my way in a painting so that I don't get lost if I can um, do this technique where I and just lay down those um, blotches of value and color 
and then I can make adjustments uh, you know it helps me find my way in the painting I noticed that the color I'm adding now initially I, I had thought that it was more of a blue violet but upon closer inspection I realize it's more of a red violet so I'm going back and making uh, those adjustments now both in the cloud area and there is an area of red violet in the waves as well it's reflecting from the clouds in the sky I'm taking a uh, two inch brush uh, that I got from the hardware store it's a soft bristle brush and I'm just going over lightly uh, to blend the clouds to make them look more like clouds. Uh, it gives it a wispy appearance. And I'm going to try not to drag the darks into my lights. So uh, I'm just going to try to stay in that light and mid value uh, area. And then uh, I cleaned the brush off and I'm coming back in to uh, blend a little more. The brush has been cleaned off and I'm now over working in the darks. And you can see that some of that yellow orange that's in the underpainting is showing through. We could leave that um, for just fun, but I'm going to go in and paint over it.
now working on the one large wave on the horizon line and this is a very stormy day at sea and so with the large wave it actually gives it a uh, diagonal um, composition. I'm coming back in with a soft bristle brush. It's also from the hardware store. It's a little smaller than the other one, but I'm reworking that dark area to see if I can get it to blend a little better. It'll look more like clouds on a stormy day. Now working in the wave area, uh, trying to create the effect of waves splashing and establishing the value range in the waves. Right now, I'm 
establishing where my widest whites are on the value scale and so I'm going to be you know working that out um, in the painting so we want to have a white in the right spots you don't want to overdo it um, because the white is used as a tool really to uh, direct the eye and, and declare what is the most important areas in your painting uh, where you have the dark dark and the light light colors contrasting that automatically uh, draws the eye in to that area. Okay, we're adding the ship end now, and we're using a ruler to make sure we get a straight line. And as we've noticed in the picture, the ship is at an angle because it's being tossed about by the waves. So um, I looked at the angles on the original painting, and I'm going to try to get something close to that here. We're drawing the mast area now, and we can see that the ship and the mast are battered from the waves, and there's uh, possibly some sail-type things that are hanging loose and torn and waving in the wind, and we're going to try to create that. The colors I used for the ship are yellow ochre some cadmium red uh, to create an orange color and then using some of that burnt sienna as well um, and black then and so the black will be towards the bottom of the ship and we'll try to stick to the lighter colors at the top and we're going to uh, draw a space for the inside of the ship, uh, the little bit of the inside of the ship that we can see. And so you will see that coming uh, more apparent uh, further into our painting. Um, 
drawing in those torn sails now. And if you'll notice, he has a splotch of orange uh, in his highlights on the mast uh, and on the ship as well. And so we're going to add those orange highlights. What I really uh, like about that is the uh, complementary uh, colors that he has used as his color palette. So we have the red violets, the blue greens, and the yellow oranges, uh, which on the color wheel are complementary colors that are, look good together. Let's add those waves that are splashing up on the ship. I'm using a small fan brush now to bring in those highlights on the waves. I took a short break and when I came back I realized that I had uh, overdone it on the white highlights so I had to come back in and add a little bit more of the darker values that I had lost. So uh, now I'm coming back with the highlights um, to make sure that I have the ones that I want but not the ones I don't want.
I am applying blue, um, some various shades of blue uh, in the areas that got muddied up a bit. I have a small line brush, but I'm using the tip of the handle rather than the bristles on the brush. It's a technique that you can use to make circles. And whatever size handle brush you have, you can you know, pick the right handle to make the right size circle. And so I've mixed together a little burnt sienna and orange uh, with the touch of white to make those portholes and um, I just want to give an indication of the porthole you know it's not going to be real visible and with a few finishing touches and we're finished and uh, I'm pleased with the results I hope you are as well thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this please hit like and subscribe